Good morning. Good morning. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong At the end of a line And all the other not quite Well, they all they ever get it right But it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me my heart a song to sing living for the world to see nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus Moses had stage fright and David brought a rock to a sword fight you picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen and you changed the world the moral of the story is everybody's got a purpose so when I hear that devil start talking to me, saying, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a nobody, trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see. So let me go down, down, down in history as another blood bought faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. Go down in blood for faithful member of the family so I ever wanna be. if they all forget my name well that's fine with me yeah that's all right I'm with me for the world to see nobody but jesus because yeah. i'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul oh you saved my soul Ever since you with you all this morning. Uh, we believe that God has led you here today for an expectant encounter with the Holy Spirit. And it's our prayer this morning here at First Presbyterian Church that you will be touched by God in your journey uh, today and always. I'm Pastor Ben. I'm the senior pastor here at First Presbyterian Church. And I played hooky last week and visited my in-laws. Um, and it was great to go. I went to church at my, my wife's old church. She grew up Nazarene. And so we had about a 40-minute sermon. I thought I would give you something kind of close to that today. <laughs> I I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, after your death and resurrection, you sent your followers into the world to proclaim your resurrection to everyone. Send us into the world as your witnesses, as your followers, to share our testimony of all you've done in our lives and in our world. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's worship God. On this blessed day, can we get everybody to stand up with us, please? And if you can sing through your mass, please do so. Remember, even if you think you can't sing, to the voices here in the church, every voice is a choir in heaven.
great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the dark
Amen. Friends, we sing, we shout, Christ is risen. We celebrate our new life and our resurrection in Jesus. But then we turn away. We go back to our old ways, our old lives, our old sins, our own ruts, old ruts. But friends, God is in the business of granting forgiveness and filling us with a new life and a living hope. So let us confess to the one who comes to fill us with grace and join me as we pray together these words from Psalm 51 this morning. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. I invite you to take a moment or two and it's just some silent confession and prayer lifting up to you anything that, that might be coming between you and God or you and someone else. Amen. Friends, hear these words of assurance from 1 Peter chapter 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance that is unperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for us by God's power, and we are guarded through faith for a salvation that is destined for us. Friends, the cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings has claimed me as and claimed you as his own. Hallelujah. And praise to the one who has set us free. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. We have young children in here. You're all our young children since there's no one under 10. So we are the children of God today. I want to thank Brock for being here and helping me with this sermon. I'm going to start off by having Brock do an experiment for you. I'm going to give him a plate and a tube of toothpaste. And he's going to put that toothpaste on the plate. Whoa, look at that. Squeeze. I don't think there's a drop left. Well, friends, this is what happens when words leave our mouth. We explode and the words come out of our mouth, sometimes without our thinking. Now I'm going to ask Brock to do another favor for me, and that is to put the toothpaste back in the tube. I even brought a stick just in case you needed something to help you. Gee, Brock. Gee, Brock, can you do that? <laughs> it is messy. You're right. It is very messy. And guess what? He's not going to be able to do it. 
I know that, you know that, Brock knows that. So what we need to think about here is our words. When they actually come out of our mouths, we can't take them back. So the lesson is make sure the words that come out of your mouth are kind and concerned and given with love so that we don't have to regret and take them back. Another part of our faith in God is witnessing. Witnessing to God is telling everyone about God. And I have an example of that as well. What if back there, in that corner, back there, there's an ice cream truck? Look back there. The poor guy has lost all power in his truck. It's an ice cream truck. He needs power for his freezers. What's going to happen? The ice cream will melt. And? Free ice cream! <laughs> so, how many of you, I would, would run back there and get free ice cream? Would you, Brock? Yeah, absolutely. Free ice cream. People will be watching what we do, and we're going to go back for that free ice cream. I certainly would. Well, here's the deal. We are excited about free ice cream. We need to be that excited about witnessing for God. People watch us, and when we witness, we are showing people our love for God. It's like that song, and we've all heard that song, and I've used it before, this little light of mine, I'm going to make a chime. Put your fingers up and let's sing that song. This little light of mine, I'm going to make a chime. This little light of mine, I'm going to make a chime. This little light of mine. I'm going to make it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Today's lesson is on using the right words and witnessing and shining for God. Brock's going to say our prayer. Dear Lord, help us get in the word. Pray and listen to others so we can be a witness to your love. We love you. And all God's children say, Amen. And if you were here for the children's sermon, I do have some ice cream out there in the freezer. But <laughs> if any of you are so led, I have 12 of them, so you're very welcome to them. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Let us pray. Gracious God, in every season and circumstance, we need your sustaining word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, proclaim the good news among us today. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. The scripture reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 17. This is the contemporary English version. Finally, all of you should agree and have concern and love for each other. You should also be kind and humble. Don't be hateful and insult people just because they are hateful and insult you. Instead, treat everyone with kindness. You are God's chosen ones, and he will bless you. The scriptures say, do you really love life? Do you want to be happy? Then stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies. Give up your evil ways and do right as you find and follow the road that leads to peace. The Lord watches over everyone who obeys him and he listens to their prayers, but he opposes everyone who does evil. Can anyone really harm you for being eager to do good deeds? Even if you have to suffer for doing good things, God will bless you. So stop being afraid. 
and don't worry about what people might do. Honor Christ and let him be the Lord of your life. Always be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. Give a kind and respectful answer and keep your conscience clear. This way you will make people ashamed for saying bad things about you or good contact, conduct as a follower of Christ. You are better off to obey God and suffer for doing right than to suffer for doing wrong. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you guys pray with me? God, I, I ask that you would be present here in our worship here today. Um, and we ask that you would draw your presence to, to those who are watching online and, and here. And uh, that you would continue to, to follow with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So when you're meeting somebody for the first time, there's a bit of a pattern, right? You go up to someone and you say... Hi, I'm Ben, right? And then I go up and say, you know, what's your name? Hi, I'm Karen. Hi, Karen. What do you do? Uh, I'm a yoga teacher. And you're going to ask? What do you do? What do I do? <laughs> so I'm always a bit leery on how to answer that question as a pastor because Pastors mean different things to different people, and I do a lot of different things. I do, I preach, I teach, I do weddings, I do funerals, I do a lot of things um, in the community. Uh, I, I help sing and lead worship sometimes. I give, I, I work with local causes, and then I do things that a lot of you don't know about, which is uh, things like the marketing for our church and uh, website development and human resources, and oftentimes a lot of IT stuff. And right now we're having an IT issue. Uh, with our YouTube feed. So I was back there taking a look at that, um, and it's just not going to happen. Sorry, our YouTube audience. You'll have to watch on Facebook right now. Um, but anyway, so that term pastor encapsulates a lot of different things. And I like being a pastor, but when I tell people I'm a pastor, something happens. A couple of different things, actually. Uh, the first thing ha happens, it's like someone just let the air out of the room. You know, uh, it's like all of a sudden I'm the fun police, you know, and, and someone will be like, you know, I'm really sorry for stealing Joey's bicycle when I was in the third grade. I really didn't mean it. Or they'll be like, I'm sorry I drink so much. And I'm like, I got a beer in my own hand. And I'm like, whatever. Um, and then, or, or they'll be like, um, they'll start wanting to talking about spiritual stuff. Like, hey, I've always wondered about this in Scripture, or I've always wondered about that. And I don't mind talking about those things, but usually it happens like when I'm on a plane or I'm like, you know, just trying to relax. And I'm like, I don't want to talk shop when I'm not working. Does that make sense? But I should be more open when I talk about my faith. So sometimes what I do to get out of it, I say I'm a motivational speaker on occasion, I've told people I'm in sales, and they always ask what kind, and I say fire insurance. <laughs> but the best response that I know of is by this, uh, a pastor by the name of J. John, and he's a British pastor, and we're going to watch that clip right now. We hope. People they often say to me, they say, J. John, you know, wh what do you do? Uh, it's always very difficult to know what to say. Because if I All right, say you to, to you, start that, that from I'm the beginning. Reverend, which I am, that conjures up certain images in people's minds as to what I might be. So I like to be a little bit creative in telling people what I do. I sat next to this lady on an aeroplane at Heathrow Airport, and I said, "Hello," and she said, "Oh, well, hello." And I said, where are you going? And she says, I'm going to Singapore. Then she said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Australia. I said, what do you do? So she told me. Then she said, what do you do? And I said, well. 
I work for a global enterprise. <laughs> She said, do you? I said, yes, I do. I said, we've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. <laughs> she said, have you? I said, yes, we have. I said, we've got hospitals and hospices and homeless shelters. I said, we do marriage work. We've got orphanages. We've got feeding programs, educational programs. I said, we do all sorts of justice and reconciliation things. I said, basically, we look after people from birth to death, <laughs> and we deal in the area of behavioral alteration. <laughs> She went, wow! <laughs> and it was so loud, her wow, loads of people turned around and looked at us. She says, what's it called? <laughs> I said, it's called the church. <laughs> If we are a follower of Jesus, wow. then we are part of a global enterprise. But not only is it global, it's intergalactic because it includes everyone that's gone before us. Wow. <laughs> so a pretty great response, isn't it? And that's your response too as a follower of Jesus, as a Christian. But it begs the question, what is our role uh, as followers of Jesus? And Jesus does something really interesting following his resurrection. He stops calling his dis followers disciples, which is Matthias in the Greek. Um, and that word means learner or pupil. Think about that. That's, that's the, the translation of disciple. I don't know if you're into uh, Star Wars, maybe it's Padawan, right? And it's a function. Jesus was a rabbi, and an itinerant rabbi, and their common teaching method of the day was for uh, disciples to follow um, the teacher for a few years, and then they would be, go on to become teachers of the faith themselves. And Martin Luther, you guys all heard of Martin Luther probably, uh, he was a famous reformer who sought to remove the power of the priesthood and put it back into the hands of the lay people and not just in the hands of the few clergy. But with power comes responsibility, and that means we now have to own that, all of us. In Matthew 28, I preached on Matthew 28 for Easter a couple weeks ago, and let me just remind you the last part of that text. Uh, Jesus says, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you. Did you catch that? He gives them a task, and that task is what? To make Make disciples. Their job is to make more pupils, their own Matthias. So uh, Jesus basically gives the disciples this th uh, life curriculum, um, and, and they're supposed to teach it. So after three years of an internship or an apprenticeship, the disciples have graduated. They're no longer pupils. They've moved up. They are now the teachers. They're no longer Matthias. And Jesus hints at this in John 15, 15. He says, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you my friends because everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Now, the word in Greek here for servants is doulo or doulos, if it's plural. And uh, it's, not a, it's not a pejorative at all. It, it translates here in the New Testament as with, with a great sense of dignity and esteem. It's, it's being used for believers who willingly live under the authority of Jesus as his devoted followers. So what he's saying, he's saying, I no longer call you my followers. I call you my friends. That's the word philos in Greek, and it means somebody who's dearly loved in a beloved way, a trusted confidant, someone who's held dear um, with a lot of affection. And, and he does that because everything I learned from my father, I have been made, I've made known to you. I no longer call you my followers. I call you my friends. We're friends of Jesus, and that's a powerful thing. 
when we look at Luke's gospel and the uh, book of Acts, they were designed to be read together in the church. They're two different letters, but they're written by the same person, Luke, and they're both addressed to Theophilus. Theophilus may have been a person. It means, uh, the Greek word, uh, the name, uh, meaning of that name is lover of God. Theophilus, Theophilus, Theophilus. Many scholars, though, think that Luke is addressing, is writing that letter directly to you as lovers of God. At the end of Luke, which chronicles the life of Jesus and the uh, beginning of Acts, which chronicles the start of the early church, Jesus changes the language he uses for the disciples. This is Luke 24. He says, this is what was written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things, and I am going to send you what the Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Did you catch that? You are witnesses to these things. And then Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. And here's Acts uh, 1, chapter 1, verses 8. And so if you kind of think about it, you, know, you watch um you know, previously on, you know, whatever, right? So, so Luke is doing the same thing. Previously in the book of Luke, um, Jesus is saying this, and so they overlap a little bit. So we got the same conversation here. Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He calls his former disciples, his former students, witnesses. And the Greek word for witness is martis. It's where we get the word martyr. But it's not the same kind of definition you probably think. In the Greek, it means witness, eyewitness. It's someone who testifies to something, like in, in court. And, and in this case, it's someone who's testifying to the work and the actions of Jesus, either uh, on earth or in their own life. And we don't use the word testimony a whole lot in Presbyterian circles. We tend to use different language. We tend to use, like, uh, what is your uh, faith story? Or what is your spiritual journey? It's the same thing. It's what is your testimony? That's your testimony. Um, basically, what has Jesus done in your life? What has your faith done to make a difference for you? How have you been encouraged or changed by the power of God? And so think about that for a moment. What or how has your faith in Jesus made a difference in your life? That's your testimony or that's your faith story. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. In our book study this week in the uh, good and beautiful community, James Bryan Smith uh, makes a profound statement. He says, all Christians share their faith, all of them. And you do that all the time. See, people like, are watching you, as, as Bobby was sharing. Uh, people are watching, your grandchildren are watching, your neighbors on, uh, are watching, your Facebook friends. They're wondering what difference does Jesus make in your life, especially if they're like maybe a little curious and might not be believers. And they're a little bit, what does Jesus do? So take a moment to think about that. Can your family, can the world see a difference in you versus the rest of the world because you're a Christian? Do, do they see you, you know, actively growing and, and participating and practicing your faith? You know, why or, or why not? And if not, what's stopping you? Every day, every moment, we model our faith to other people. Through our words, our actions, our stewardship, how we spend our time. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So what do our words and our actions and our stewardship say? All Christians share their faith. Does your faith build up God's kingdom? 
It's another good question. For some, the answer is no. Fortunately, the Westboro Baptists have been pretty quiet lately, but they had a really strong campaign of hate. They would say awful things and post awful placards. And, and, but white supremacy is active in a number of parts of the church, and it still exists. Martin Luther King Jr. said, 11 a.m. on Sundays is the nation's most segregated hour. But we don't see Jesus preaching segregation, do we? No. Where does that teaching come from? It's not, that's not from Jesus. St. Francis says, preach the gospel at all times when necessary use words. And I would think the new revised modern translation of that would be from John Polovitz, who says this on the next slide. Sometimes the best evangelism is simply telling people you're a Christian and then not being a complete jerk. <laughs> right? I, how does your faith make you different? All Christians share their faith. People are watching. But do they do it in a way that builds up God's kingdom or damages it? What's their witness? In 1 Peter chapter 3, Peter gives us some pretty good advice on how to be a Christian and show our faith. And Nancy read it for you. I'm just going to hit a few highlights in this. It says, finally, all of you should have concern and love for each other. You should also be kind and humble. Don't be hateful and insult people even if they insult you. It's sort of like your mom and you're fighting and you're like, I don't care who started it, finish it, you know. Uh, treat everyone with kindness. Stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies. Give up your evil ways and do what's right as you find and follow the road that leads to peace. A few weeks ago on, on Palm Sunday, I shared Luke's gospel, and Jesus is coming down from the Mount of Olives. And there's this jubilant pro procession, and then he does something profound. He stops, and everybody around him stops. And he looks at Jerusalem, and he weeps, and he cries out. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you of all people would know the path that leads to peace. What's, Paul, what's Peter saying here? Give up your evil ways, do what's right, as you find and you follow the road that leads to peace. Shalom. Peter continued, continues, even if you suffer for doing good things, God will bless you. So stop being afraid and don't worry about what people might do. I'm going to share that one again. It's a good one. And Brock, remember this as you're growing up. Even if you suffer for doing good things, God will bless you. So stop being afraid and don't worry about what people might do. And he follows it up with honor Christ and let him be the Lord of your life. And then he says, always be ready to give a kind and respectful answer when someone asks you about the hope you have. Always be ready to give a kind and respectful answer about your hope. And maybe that's not telling people I sell fire insurance. <laughs> Due to COVID, it has been a while since I've been on an airplane, talked to a total stranger, or uh, had a total random conversation with a stranger in a bar. And as I look at this text, I'm wondering if perhaps we should be a bit more transparent, a bit more forthright in our faith. And for those of you who are new to the faith, this is your task. This is your job. Your job is to get baptized and then learn about Jesus. Learn what he taught us about uh, our loving Abba, our heavenly Father, about God's amazing grace, about the way to peace, about forgiveness. And for those of you who've been Christians for a while um, and been in the church, you have a different task. Say you've been here for maybe three years or a little longer, or in the church for three years, or as Christians for three years, now it's time for you to own this work of disciple-making. You have all been given the gift 
of the Holy Spirit. So receive it. You are no longer mere pupils of Jesus. He has called you to be his friends and his witnesses. And your task is to show others, to model Jesus by your words and by your actions. By and that's your testimony. Always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. There's an old story, an, an analogy, whatever you want to call it, about a guy who wanted to make a difference in the world, but he, he found that it was just too much work and overbearing, and he just didn't really try. But had he started at home, he would have impacted his family. And together they would have impacted their church. And their church and along with other churches would have impacted their community, and their community would have impacted their, re their region, and then their area, and then the nation, and perhaps there would have been some change in the world. Friends of Jesus, start by impacting your family, your friends, your coworkers. Show them the difference that your faith makes in your daily life. Model for them the importance of your faith through your words, through your actions, through your church engagement, through your stewardship, for your, through your love for others. Friends, partner with our church, or if you're watching us online and you attend a different church, through your local church and, and talents um, as we model together the love of Jesus to our communities. as we live out together our testimony as a church, our witness to the church, of, of as a church. And finally, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have, the faith you have. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy Jesus. You promised the Father would pour out your Holy Spirit upon your witnesses so we can be a testimony to the world through our lives, through our words, through our actions. Open our hearts and our minds and fill us and baptize us. Anoint us with the Holy Spirit. Come upon your church and fill it with the strong and palpable presence of your Spirit. May all of us who join us, all of us who join here, Lord, or in person, online, may they all be touched and transformed to be image bearers and witnesses of lives forever changed and blessed by your grace, your love, and by your holy anointing. Amen. Before I have Nancy pray, I was looking at this, working through this on Friday in here, and it, it came upon me, and, and I just thought I'd try it. Um, the Spirit was saying, Sing this song. And so I'm going to have you sing. It's kind of like this little mind of mine, but it's... In my heart, Lord, be glorified. Be glorified. In my heart, Lord, be glorified. Today, our church. In our church, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In our church, Lord, be glorified today. Let's that be our prayer for today. Nancy. Let us pray. Steadfast God, thank you for sheltering us in the storms of life. Thank you for claiming us as a people beloved forever. Because of your great love and care for us, we trust you in our brightest joys and deepest needs. Hear our prayers. We ask for the deep needs of the world 
in places of violence and warfare, give us courage to lay down weapons of death and promote life and well-being instead. Let our enemies become our brothers and sisters of peace and healing. In places of drought and fire, bring rains that make the earth colorful and verdant again. In places where people experience the chaos of nature, let brothers and sisters come to help restore and rebuild. Loving God in life and death, we belong to you. So in the midst of life, we entrust ourselves to your care. We are bold to ask for help when we are confused, lost, or afraid. We are eager today to ask for healing for our bodies and minds, whether wounded, ill, or recovering. We desire to hear your voice of love to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and to see you clearly. Let us serve others faithfully as disciples of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray today. Amen. for mission and um, and it's for summer camp so we want to invite you to watch that hi kids my name is Carolyn Brown and I am the camp director for the presbytery I wanted to invite you to come to church camp this summer camp will be the week of June 7th through the 12th at Ponderosa camp in Monument and it's for kids in third grade through eighth grade. This year, our theme is, May the Fruit of the Spirit Be With You. We want to invite you to join us and learn more about what it really means to belong to Jesus. We have lots of fun at camp, and your whole week will be filled with games, activities, adventures, and friends. Registration is open now, and camp is filling up pretty fast, so you need to register soon. You can talk to Joanne Sharp to get a registration form, or you can go to our website at www.puebloprebytary.org. I hope I get to see you at church camp. Friends, it's through your partnership both through your time and your talent and your stewardship that we're able to make a difference and that we're able to witness to how God has changed our lives and our community and beyond. And so we invite you to partner with us. And if you're watching at home, um, uh, there'll be a, a slide that'll pop up for you that'll allow you some, uh, give you the, the number where you can text or you can go online uh, to um, our website and uh, then you can click on give online there if you are watching from afar and if you're here um, uh, we invite you to, to utilize the uh, boxes the giving boxes that are at the doors let us let us take some time meditating on how we can be a witness to Jesus using the talents that he's given to us our skills our abilities our time Shout it.
amazing grace. We thank you for the many gifts that you have given to us so that we can use them to build up your kingdom and make a difference. To help others who need help, to guide others who need guidance, to care for others who need caring, and to show love to those who need your healing touch. Lord, we lift up to you those who are in our hearts, on our minds, who need the hope that we have, the hope that we can offer. All these things we pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. I have a few announcements for you uh, before we go today. Um, and they're on the back of your bulletin, but let me just highlight a few, especially for those who are watching online. Um, first of all, uh, there's the Presbyterian Summer Camp, and we invite you to take a look at that. The fees on that are in the, uh, the, the costs are in the, uh, the bulletin there. Uh, secondly, a, a big thank you to all of those who um, have their King Supers card or just their phone number tied into the King Supers reward program. Doesn't cost you anything, but the, the youth group gets a, um, a, the, a gift from back from King Supers, a bit of a rebate for all that you spend there. And it's a great way uh, that doesn't cost you anything, but helps to support the youth ministry program here. Um, Finally, uh, let's see, on April 26th, so uh, a week from Monday evening, I'll be doing a training for QPR, which is question, uh, persuade, and refer, and it's designed to teach the general public how to do uh, suicide intervention for those who may be considering self-harm. It's basically like a first aid class um, for mental health in the area of suicide. Um, and uh, there will be uh, two different times that will be starting. So 5 o'clock if you need to do the full training or you want to do the full training. And then 6 to 7 if you've been trained in the last year and you just want some more uh, practice and role plays and so forth. So it's a total of two hours. Uh, it's free, but you could save a life. Um, and uh, finally... Um, there's a couple of ways that you can look on, on there. Uh, we're doing the grand opening of the mobile shower program for cooperative care. It's going to be right here in our parking lot that day. And that's also that same Monday, April 26th. So uh, you, can, you can come, you can, you can help. Uh, the public rescue mission is looking for volunteers uh, as well to help run errands and to uh, help people in transition and, and be mentors uh, for that. And finally, uh, donuts are coming back, and they have come back. So uh, we invite you to stick around after worship today and have some socially distant fellowship and enjoy a donut and a cup of coffee together. Finally, friends, let me give you this blessing. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will, again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone 
The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. May we live in that peace. Go in peace. If you have an offering, please uh, drop it in the box. And let's stand and close in some, some music. And remember, as you venture out today, please keep in mind today and every day. In your words and in your actions, just try to be more like Jesus. Just don't get it right Will I talk a talk that I don't walk And miss the moments right before my eyes Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I could have helped When I just can't see past myself Oh, help me be a little more like mercy a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love, and faith. A little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me. Go with God.